Dune Part 2 has wrapped. In this video, we'll take a look at all the Dune updates so far. So we've seen Part 1 of Dune, and now it's about completing the set and seeing what they're going to do with Dune Part 2. So I'm going to offer some of my thoughts and opinions of what I think we're going to see in Dune Part 2, the tone of the film, and where I think it's going to go based on what I know. If you like this kind of work, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It helps spread the video more and helps my channel to grow. I really appreciate the support. So if I was making Dune Part 2, I'd start the film with Oscar Isaac's head on a spike. I know that sounds gruesome, but bear with me. We might see Oscar Isaac return in the most gruesome way. The head of the Duke on a spike displayed by the Harkonnen or the Sardaukar as a means to gloat, to display their might and show the defeat of House Atreides. His skull, of course, would later be reclaimed by Paul and the Fremen, and will be entombed in the cliffs or mountains, buried the way that some people buried their dead in the Middle East centuries ago, in Old Earth history, away from the predators. The tomb will later become a shrine, similar to how some sects of Muslims revere the dead. This is the father of the Mehdi, after all, which the Fremen take very seriously. So I'd start the movie with the Duke's head on a spike and the Fremen forces trying to reclaim the head or the holy relic in order for them to give the late Duke a proper burial. And for some reason, I imagine this in a Nolan sense where it's like this whole sequence that occurs right at the beginning. At least that's how I would do it. And we've already seen the symbolism of the bull's head mounted on the wall. So Dune Part 1 seems to be setting up even more symbolism of Leto's head mounted for Dune Part 2. And don't forget, Timothy Chalamet did say that there there is a lot more gore in this part, in Dune Part 2, compared to Dune Part 1, so we'll see what happens. But we may get to see Oscar Isaac return in that way, or in some kind of dream sequence or memory. Don't forget Paul still has the ability to see visions, past and future, and even possible futures and futures that will not occur. There is a possibility for Oscar Isaac to return in that sense, or in some sense. Of course, we have the great Christopher Walken, who will be uh, playing Emperor Shaddam IV, and I think it will be interesting to see what they do with him. Do I think they're going to de-age him? No, I don't. I think they're going to go with the way he looks already and have that be an indication of his age, despite spice intake. And to be honest with you, I don't really think that they care about the effects of spice intake and how it keeps them looking youthful despite their age. They didn't care about the blue within blue eyes of Peter de Vries, so I don't really think they care about how spice affects the body. In fact, I think they kind of want to keep the whole drug narcotic element of spice out of the equation. I think the best that they're going to do is show that spice creates visions and dreamlike effects. And I think that's as far as it will go. When it's PG-13, I really don't see them as dancing naked in the streets and, you know, drug taking. I mean, there was a scene where Gurney Halleck was supposed to be smoking an irjil with spice in it, uh, or a hooker pipe with spice in it. And that was cut from the film. So, you know, smoking being a thing that they didn't want to promote or drug taking being something they didn't want to promote, I don't know. But I don't think we're going to see it in Dune Part 2. When you look at Dune Part 1, you see see a lot of minimalism in the aesthetic. Of course we're going to see Emperor Shaddam IV, his palace and his homeworld. And the thing is, his palace cannot be minimalist in aesthetic. It has to be lavish. Otherwise, a lot of things won't match up and make sense. For example, the Baron's throne room is practically bare and empty. And this doesn't make sense aesthetically because he's supposed to be lavish and gluttonous. He's supposed to revel in his wealth unless all that wealth goes to the Emperor. What is the point of trying to acquire all that wealth when you spend it lavishly on nothing? Where are the expensive draperies, furniture, garments, food banquets, parties? Where is the opulence of royalty in Dune Part 1? Simply put, it's not there. That's why I believe Part 2 absolutely has to show the Emperor's Palace as being the most lavish and opulent spaces in the film, because he is the most wealthy. He's the Emperor of the known universe. So there absolutely cannot be a minimalist look to the Emperor and his lifestyle and the space he resides in. Otherwise, it would undermine the bare minimalist look of Part 1. I hope that Denis Villeneuve's brutalism and minimalism won't end up undermining the Dune universe overall. We also have Florence Pugh playing Princess Irulan, and I think she'll be able to capture the tragedy of the character quite well. 
and we have Leah Sado playing Margot Fenring, but no word on her husband's character being cast, Hasimir Fenring. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't cast in the film. And an interesting fact is that Leah Sidou is related to Michelle Sidou, who is her granduncle, and was the financer and producer of Alejandro Jodorowsky's Dune. So it's funny how things come full circle. We still have big sequences to see, like Paul riding the sandworm for the first time, and I think it's going to top the harvester scene. I think the sandworm riding scene is going to be the definitive scene, or one of the definitive scenes, like the harvester scene was in Dune Part 1. Of course the final battle is going to be a huge moment as well, and the knife fight between Fade and Paul. I don't believe that there's going to be a Water of Life sequence. I think there will be some semblance of a Water of Life sequence, but it won't be what we think it will be. You know, I imagine this huge, elaborate, colourful, intoxicated sequence with these crazy visuals that you'd see in things like The Cell. And there may yet be some kind of sequence in that fashion where Jessica's taking the Water of Life and having these inner voices, these inner experiences, and I can see more of an elaborate sequence being cut from the film. Because if you remember in the Dune Test, screenings, there were scenes of some kind of Water of Life sequence, and it's something we may never get to see, but I'm hoping that Denis does the Water of Life sequence justice, in one way or another. There are some other things about the way Dune Part 2 is being shot, and it should offer some very interesting sequences for the desert fights. There's also a potential casting of Aaliyah, but I don't really want to mention who this person is, just because I don't want to open any kind of criticism towards her. Because she is young, there could be potential issues there with the casting and the fan base, so I don't really want to open that door. I'm going to leave it to the powers that be to announce the casting publicly or have it simply happen when we see her appear in Dune Parts 2. But what I can tell you is it seems that she has been cast older. Whether or not they're going to play her younger, I cannot say for sure. But so far she is the youngest member to be cast in Dune. And if she is Aaliyah, then it would seem that they aren't going down the CGI route. But either way, I wish her all the best and I wish the Dune production the best. I think we'll get to see Duncan Idaho return turning in visions, appearing wherever Paul Atreides treads, because he's been to these sieges before, he's been amongst the Fremen people before. So just like in Dune Part 1, when Paul Atreides looks up to the rock face and sees Duncan Idaho, he'll see Duncan Idaho again in certain scenes. We may even get to see a scene with Paul Atreides and his father again, having a discussion. Perhaps from the deleted scenes that we didn't see in Dune Part 1, where they speak on a balcony and talk talk about Paul Atreides' destiny, which I covered in this Dune Deleted Scenes video. And it's a beautiful scene, it's a very moving scene, so I hope it kind of finds its way into Dune Parts 2 somehow, and isn't wasted. We've been promised that we're going to see Gurney Halleck play the Baliset this time, so perhaps the Dune music that was composed for Gurney Halleck's singing and Baliset playing for Dune Parts 1 will appear in Dune Parts 2. Unfortunately, it seems that some people aren't returning to this Dune production. Uh, I don't see Kate Arithmendi uh, working on the Dune Parts 2 production at all. I could be wrong, but I don't think she has worked on this film. Which is a real shame, because not only is she very talented, but she was very outspoken about the things that were occurring in the Middle East during the Dune production, and amongst the Muslim people during the Dune production, and I felt that there was a kind of synergy there between reality and fantasy. And I think it showed a genuine care, which I really appreciated. But for some reason she isn't returning, I don't know why she's not returning, perhaps she had prior commitments, I cannot say for sure. Another person who I don't see returning is the woman who played Hara, or was said to have played Hara. She appeared in Dune Part 1. Her name is Gloria Obiano. She was another person who was outspoken and supportive of the things that were happening in the Middle East at the time. And it's a shame she's not returning. I don't know why she's not returning, I thought she would have a big bigger role in Dune Parts 2, but she doesn't seem to. Um, she hasn't been filming with the cast and crew as far as I'm aware. Again, why she's not returning, I cannot say for sure. Uh, maybe prior commitments. But again, it's very sad because I really appreciated her and her efforts and her support. It showed her quality uh, as well as Kate Arithmendi's quality, not just as a filmmaker, but as a human being. Another actor who isn't returning is Elmi Rashid Elmi, who plays Shamir. He hasn't been filming in Abu Dhabi or Jordan, and I don't believe he was filming in Budapest as far as I know. So I 
don't think he's returning and I think that also means that his character Shemir didn't survive Dune Part 1 so he must have been killed by the Sardaukar. It would have been nice if he survived and somehow escaped the Sardaukar, that would have been so cool and I wish he would have been given a bigger role because I think he deserves a bigger role but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case so he won't be returning either. I also don't think that Tarkia Norwell will be returning as the Fremen Tanat either because I haven't heard anything on him going to film on Dune Part 2 but it seems that we will see new Fremen and new actors portraying them and of course the first one is one that was announced officially which is Suhaila Yaqub. She filmed in Jordan, in Abu Dhabi and in Budapest so I believe that she's going to have quite a prominent role as a Fremen. Whether or not that translates on screen is another matter but I think she'll have a decent amount of screen time and a decent role. In terms of the Bene Gesserit we have Akiko Hitomi who will play a Bene Gesserit sister. Whether or not she will have an actual appearance, a visual appearance or whether it will be just a voice I don't know but if I were to guess I would say that she will only have a voice part being one of the Bene Gesserit voices or inner voices and we saw this happen with Dune Part 1 anyway. There were people cast as Bene Gesserits who were only the sound and voice of Bene Gesserits in Paul Atreides' visions. We'll also have Kate Tennyson as a Bene Gesserit sister but I think it'll only be a voice role. We also have Tara Briathnak, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. She will be a Bene Gesserit too. Uh, whether it'll be a voice only part I'm not sure but she will also be in Dune Part 2. We've seen Dave Bautista wearing the Dune Part 2 stunt team t-shirts so I think he'll have a lot more stunts and action sequences in Dune Part 2. I think we'll get to see the Inkvine whip which gives the scar to Gurney Halleck. So I think there will be a showdown between Gurney Halleck and Raban in some sense. I don't think we're going to get a full sequence where they fight but that would be great if we did. But I do think there will be some kind of showdown, perhaps a quick whip or an instance where Gurney Halleck recognizes that that is the whip that gave him the scar and recognizes Raban as being the man who gave him the scar. So there will be something like that, but I don't think we'll have a full blown sequence, but I'd love to be proven wrong here because I think that would be great to see. A full showdown with Dave Bautista and Josh Brolin, come on, who doesn't want that? Of course, we'll get to see Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya's characters in Paul Atreides and Charles blossom in their love and grow as the ultimate power couple of the universe and I think that will be great to see because it was teased so much in Dune Part 1 that there has to be a payoff. I think after the Baron's attack he'll be on a ventilator so he'll be breathing through a ventilator and it will kind of have this similarity between Darth Vader and I'm sure people are going to make that comparison when it comes out. I think we're going to see Zendaya as a lot more of a fighter herself, doing stunts and fight scenes and showing off her skills as a Fremen. There have been other castings but I don't really want to talk about them because Legendary has been dishing out DCMAs to the Dune community and it's just not worth it. I'm going to be speaking on this issue more in the future because enough is enough. But what are you looking forward to in Dune Part 2? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in more, check out this video.